I'm Tony Gissings from the Rocket Reel Company and we're doing a series of uh, six short videos explaining the mysteries of the multiply reel. We'll be taking a reel to pieces and through the series we'll be doing other things, obviously putting things back together again, setting the reel up and eventually talking about tuning the reel, how you set it up for fishing or for tournament casting or whatever else you want to do with it. So we have the reel in pieces all laid out carefully. What we're going to do now is clean, lubricate and put the reel back together again. And we're starting off with the handle side, which is the bit that mystifies and baffles most people. Here we have the brake plate that everything is mounted on. And although this is a brand new reel, we are going to clean it and lubricate it as we would as if that had been shoved in your tackle box and forgotten about for six months. So the first thing we're going to do is take out hammerite thinners and clean off all the existing oil, grease, crap, salt or whatever else and uh, give it a good clean up. So, okay, so now we've got a nice clean, shiny um, brake plate. From this, what we're going to do next. This is the very, very most important thing. Here I've got little tiny paint brushes and what we're going to do is just give the, the whole brake plate a very, very tiny uh, lubrication of, we use obviously yeah, the other rocket fuel, now in its 26th year. It ain't broke, so we aren't going to fix it. You just need a thin film over it, so all it's to do is to protect the aluminium from corrosion. And okay, so the next thing we're going to come on to is the actual um, shaft itself. Now, this is where the liquid grease comes in. This is the most important part to make sure that this is lubricated well because you'll see in a moment this bit here which is the drive shaft goes on top of it and if it isn't lubricated properly then you'll find this gets worn very quickly and you need a new drive shaft. So a little bit of thought and TLC and that stops that little problem. So now we're going to put these bits back together again in order that they came off. This is number one and number one sits on this bit here. Number two, I always like to think of it as number two there, which is actually the button. Goes on there. And this is part number three. Now how do we know which way around to to go? Well this is actually going to be part of lifting up the pinion gear when you disengage the gear. So this is like a shovel almost. It goes this way here. Fine. Right. Now the other little pieces that we have is this is your pinion gear. The pinion gear itself, although this has already been done, we're going to pretend it hasn't been and it needs a good clean. So we're going to clean it in and out. And then we're going to lubricate it. Back to the old yellow label rocket field again. For here, for here, and for here. And it's going to sit on this collar here. Now, the other important thing is just give this a little bit of oil there. And here we have that in place. So, okay, so where does this one go? All right, now this one goes at the front here. Actually, if you look, as you press it in, that lifts up and that comes down again. So, okay, the next bit is the retaining clip um, and spring attachment. This goes onto here, onto these two pillars to the rear. These go on the brass pillars at the back. Now then, if we just put them on gently on that side and on there, you'll see we've engaged the mechanism. That is the lock on here, the little red button, which has got a spring behind it. Now if we just double check that everything's together again properly, there we are. The cam is lifted up, the pinning gear is moved away from the spool. The thing is in free, is in free flight, free flow, so it's disengaged. Now, the drive shaft, when you turn that, the handle, everything then is back together again. Now it's very important that you just double check that everything is put down nice and tight and it's all together.
Okay, so that's the first little bit. Okay, so the, I always think of it when I'm putting when I'm putting the handle back together again in two halves, tale of two cities almost. So this is the first little bit, which is the actual bit that mystifies everybody. So we're now going to put the drive shaft bit together, which if you just uh, think about it logically, uh, it, it's not that hard really. Okay. This little baby here is what we call the drive shaft. This is the bit that everything is, is hinged on. Um, so once again, it's very important that it's lubricated. Although we've lubricated the pillar, you do need to put a good blobble on here as well. Okay, so we've got the copper washer on first. Then we put the drive shaft itself on next. If I can just move that just for a second. Now we're going to refer back to where we started off. Okay, so the next one is put the carbon fiber washer there. Then we're going to put what, see what we call the main gear, the main gear there which meshes with the pinion gear. And the next one is another carbon fiber drag washer. And then we have this plain washer plain oval washer, carbon fibre drag washer again. These are drag washers from the smoothie company in America. Um, although a lot of manufacturers are now incorporating carbon fibre drag washers, they were the first people to come up with the idea and we go on from there. Right, okay, so let's have a look once again. This basically is your little job half done. Okay, so we've got the drive gear here, turning the pinning gear, the handle, okay. Only one thing I want to do now, if you take the reel like that, what we think is very important is this, and this is where our liquid grease comes into its own, because this is the bit that needs the liquid grease. If we just turn it round a little bit. Now we use liquid grease, but what we don't want it to do, because it's very thick, we don't want it to ingress into the bearings in the spool. So what's important? We have the gear rotating nice and freely. We're fully lubricated and protected. Um, so the next thing to do is to put on the uh, handle side end plate, which is here. Now what I want to do is show you a little trick that we use when we're putting the reel back together again, because sometimes if it isn't incorrectly, then sometimes you can get um, on this anti-reverse anti bearing. That's an, so one way bearing that is located in there. And what you can find is that the, if it isn't perfectly centralized, as you're turning the handle, it catches and it can be really annoying. So instead of t rotating freely, it catches in places. So this is a little trick to show you how you can overcome that little problem. Okay, and then we're going to put the actual end plate itself on here and lightly, just lightly screw the screws up onto the cage. And then we're going to put the anti-reverse bearing shim onto there. Okay, and we're going to just make sure that it rotates nice and nice and freely. Okay, because if it isn't in properly, it won't. <laughs> so what we we'll then do is just loosen the screws up lightly, and here we're going to put these little screws in here. And what I would like to say at this point is for somebody that obviously we do repair reels as well, our own reels, and the greatest crime <laughs> in real repairers books is the fact that people tend to confuse putting a reel back together again with the world's strongest man competition. So, so in actual fact you're only looking just to just very very gently nip up those screws not try and break the reel. Right, here we go, running perfectly freely. So, okay, we take this all off again. Okay, and put it back to one side. You 
says. Fine. Okay, so that is your handle side almost complete. The only thing that we have to do, the last two bits, are the spring washers. Now let us have a look at these. You'll see they're curved, so what they need to do is they need, one needs to go on that way, and the other one needs to go on the opposite side so that you have got the spring effect. This is all part of the drag system, so that's how that goes next. On here, next, we put the uh, little MicroStar drag washer. We come out with these, this little idea because um, when people adjust the end float on here, um, most star drags are huge and horrible. We did have finger drags that we used as well, but they're a bit fiddly if, you're in, if it's cold and if it's wet in the middle of winter. So we've uh, come back on to these little micro star drags and uh, they do the job of both. They're good for field casting and they're also very handy for fishing as well. So as we're doing along, we put the micro star drag on. We then put the spring washer. Please note which way the spring washer should go. A lot of real manufacturers put them on upside down for reasons best known to themselves. Okay, and then we have the e-clip. Okay, now the e circlip, this little thing has got a life of its own and you've got to be a little bit careful with it because it can make your life rather difficult if you don't put it on <laughs> nice and easily. Okay, so if you just locate it in position, take a little tiny screwdriver and that's how it clicks into position. Okay, this little baby, little tiny, very sharp screwdriver for taking it off and putting it back on again. Then the next thing is our stainless steel uh, end nut. Now once again, it's not the world's strongest man competition. Just put it on just so it nips up nice and tight. In actual fact here, we're going to just locate um, the handle plate onto the little hole. He says if he can find the screw, which has wandered over here. Okay. So here we are, handle side, completely ready to rock and roll. Uh, everything in place, uh, nice and freely turning handle. Um, everything there, ready to go for the next phase of putting the reel back together again. Okay, this is the hardest bit.